In the early morning of January the 17th, 1995, instruments in a lab in Western Japan picked up a burst of intense electromagnetic radiation. It was the signature of a massive earthquake which had just struck the city of Kobe from its epicenter 20 kilometers to the southwest. There was no warning. 180,000 buildings were destroyed. An urban area 20 kilometers long and four kilometers wide was totally wrecked. Nothing moved in or out of Kobe, by road or by rail, for three days. The root of the disaster was a shock that happened on the boundary between the Eurasian and the Philippine Plate, a boundary that runs right beneath the city. There is a direct relationship between plate margins and earthquakes throughout the world. Japan is very vulnerable to earthquakes because of the country's special physical geography. Everything is packed tightly into the precious stretches of lowland, which make up only 20% of the land area. Japanese cities are one of the most complex urban landscapes on Earth, mixed up, multi-layered, fragile. When it comes to earthquakes, another problem for Japan is that huge areas of land have been reclaimed from the sea. Kobe itself has advanced 15 kilometers seaward in the last 20 years. The trouble is, the reclaimed land, which now accounts for a third of all Japan's coastline, is relatively soft and wet and allows the shock waves from earthquakes to carry on for long periods of time. During the Kobe earthquake, at locations on solid rock, the shaking lasted 20 seconds. On the reclaimed land, it went on for two or even three minutes. As its human landscape becomes more and more complex, Japan becomes more and more vulnerable to earthquakes. The country has spent a fortune studying them, but until now, no way of predicting when they will occur has been discovered.